Welcome to another edition of First and Ten with Rams coach Joe Prudhomme. I'm Jimmy the St. Christopher. Before we get into the Rams' big win over Arizona Christian University, I'd like to pay tribute to former Ram defensive tackle Charles Trammell, who tragically lost his life last week. Coach, what are your thoughts on Charles? Oh, we're going we're gonna to miss Charles. I mean, he was just a really lively guy and great personality and the main thing about him is he was so selfless it was it was always about everybody else he was the one that would you know give you the shirt off his back and um, matter of fact he was getting ready to rejoin the team on Monday uh, he'd gotten a lot of academic stuff out of the way got it all up to speed and, and he was going to come back and join us and um, and then Wednesday was his birthday and you know he passed helping somebody else and uh, we just were using him as an example of what it is to be that type of person who is always giving and looking out to help somebody else and not so worried about themselves but to help others and I mean my condolences are the family and I'm not going to pretend to understand uh, why or how or things of that nature it's just at this point it's just faith and, and just be thankful for the time that he was with us and, and what he gave to so many people and he's a, he's a perfect example of, of the way you should be there for other people and so he'll be he'll be greatly missed by the by the whole Ram family and general community. And it was a touching moment at the candlelight vigil and the balloon release for the service for Charles last mm -hmm. week. And then also when the Rams came out carrying his jersey before the game against Arizona Christian the other night. Very classy, touching move. Well, the, you know, a lot of the guys that are really close, Charles asked if we could do that. I said, by all means, you know, we need to do that. And um, I thought that was, uh, we'll carry his spirit with us from now on out. And the jersey's just a really symbolic way of doing that. Let's get to the game, the aforementioned Arizona Christian game. The Rams destroy the Firestorm 48-21. to They stomp the Firestorm 28-21. to A bunch of big plays early, big pass plays, big running plays. Your thoughts on the big victory? You know, we, we played well. I mean, we, we said we had to win the turnover margin, uh, time of possession, and, and the explosive play categories. We won explosive play. We won time of possession, but we, you know, they had a turnover or take away from us, and, and we didn't get any this time. And, but uh, our kids came out with a purpose, and we practiced very, very well through the week. Um, and we were, I felt like we were really prepared. Uh, we practiced at 8.45 every night to get used to the mountain time uh, zone. And our last practice was on Wednesday. And we had a, kind of a, it was a good start, but it was a great finish to practice. And, and I, I just felt like that was kind of a forebodance or foreshadowing of what was going to happen. And I told our guys that, you know, you're in a position now, you know, your circadian clock is now in, is synced up that you feel like you're in this time zone and you're going you're gonna to start out fast. There's going to be a little lull at times and then you're going to finish fast. And, boy, they did. And, and they came out. The, the focus was high. And, you know, we didn't we – played, we played really good. I wouldn't say we played great. We played really good, though, really solid in all three phases. In 539 total yards for the Rams, they allowed only 275. What do you think was the turning point in the game? I think when they scored, uh, I think it was second quarter, and we came right back and scored before the half, uh, the two-minute offense. I think, and then we had a stop, and that pushed the margin out, uh, and I think that was, that was it. I think that was the main turning point. Um, and then Dale's touchdown uh, running at, at the end was, a, was really – uh, took the wind out of him, I think, because it was a really unexpected way that he scored. It was a broken play, and he just happened to scramble through the defense. Um, it was supposed to be a handoff, and it was Dale being Dale, and he improvised and made a great play out of it. And Dale threw for 212 yards, those two TDs, and then mm -hmm. shifty, darting, Ernest Caesar for 195 <laughs> yards. Yeah. And the defense, too, with the, with the five sacks. And then Archie Williams, the SAC Defensive Player of the Week, a big right. game from Archie. Right. You know, Archie, we moved him to defensive end in the spring, um, towards the end of spring, because at linebacker he was good, uh, but he was just, he's so explosive and he's so quick, and he's got that body uh, of, a, of a great defensive end that we call a bandit. It's, it's kind of a hybrid position. But, uh, you know, we wanted, we wanted a little more explosiveness out of that position, uh, and Archie has it. And so it allowed him to quit thinking and trying to read and react. It's just more go, and, and you have less things to read, and it really suits his, his gifts and what he's able to do. And he had a great game. He, played, he was playing over their best offensive tackle uh, from last, last two-year starter. 
uh, and did a good job from there. But once we moved him from the other side, he really started wreaking havoc. And um, he had a great game. It, it was a really good first game for him at a new position. How do you think the back seven on defense looked? You know, I thought, I thought really well overall. There's a couple breakdowns. But overall, I thought we played well. Um, you know, I didn't like the holding call, didn't like the personal or the pass interference. Some of those things we got to clean up. You know, we, we committed them, um, but we just got to get better at that. But I thought they played well overall. Uh, the plays he got were some breakdowns and they took advantage of. But I could see them growing because there's a lot of young faces back there. So they, are, uh, no, they played well. And, of course, last week you beat Arkansas State, Mexico, handedly. But this game, nothing against the Red Wolves from, uh, from Arkansas State, Mexico. But this game, a little better competition. How do you think the offensive line opened holes and protected Dale? Oh, I thought the offensive line had a really good game. I mean, there were no sacks. Um, Dale, of course, helped him out a little bit with his feet a couple times. But uh, the holes were nice. They were really locking onto people. We just got to play a little lower. Uh, but other than that, I thought uh, the O-line really came through, and it showed what a veteran group they are. And uh, So I was, I was proud of the way they played. After two games, what's, what area do you think needs to be worked on? You know, I'm going to throw out the first game um, as far as evaluation part. But for this game, you know, we got to improve uh, third down conversions. We didn't do as good a job on offense in the third down conversions. There's a couple times in the red zone we didn't score. One of them was a missed field goal. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I need to be a little bit more aggressive, which I, I will be. Um, but, you know, we got to get a little bit better in the red zone. we got to get better on the third down conversions. Um, other than that, we just got to keep taking care of the football, and we need to create some more turnovers. And we gotta, we got to eliminate the big plays for touchdowns. We only had one or two, but those can really kill you in that game. And, and you know, in that game, we had too many penalties. We, we had too many penalties. A couple of uh, that we could have controlled, some of them that we couldn't. Um, but, you know, my goal is always get four or less. If we can get down to four penalties or less, then that's good. We had two pre-snap penalties, um, false start um, on a receiver, false start on, a, on a, one of our gate plays down there for extra point. I can't stand pre-snap penalties because that's just a lack of focus. Um, so we've got to clean those up. And once we do, I think we'll, be, we'll get better and better. Now, during the week, do you work on specific things like that? more than you would during other weeks that you weren't as strong, you were stronger during those areas? I mean, do you highlight sure. those things to practice sure. on? Yeah, you, uh, you take and look at everything, and, you know, we, we have our evaluation meetings. We talk about, you know, what we've done, what we need to do, where we need to improve. Um, we're pretty set in our routine as far as what we do, but there's always more of a point of emphasis on certain things. And, and this week it will be, uh, you know, reducing penalties um, and, and just uh, – Converting on third down will be a little bit more attention in that area. Uh, other than that, it's just getting fundamentally better and more sound, and um, we just we can't have breakdowns. And we had a few, but you know we we played well enough to where it didn't hurt us. Back home for a couple of games starting this Saturday. It's Oklahoma Panhandle State University at Farrington. It's a Saturday night game, seven o'clock kickoff. But they got smacked around pretty good by Friends University and then Langston. Yeah. How do the Aggies look? You know the Aggies are, are very athletic. They um, they had some breakdowns that went and that hurt them, um, but they're they're athletic and and Majeski does a really good job with them, Coach Majeski. And uh, I expect they're going to be on a bounce back, ready to really show everybody that those were those were flukes and that in the real uh, OPSU and. So we got to buckle up and, and be sound and be ready to play. Um, but they can hurt us. They got some explosive kids. They got a, a returner that's very, very good. He took, a, took one to the house against Langston. So we can't give up cheap touchdowns. I mean, that's something that, that we can't do. And um, we, got our hands, we got our hands full. And then their quarterback, Brandon Stevens, the SAC freshman of the year, he throws it around. So he looks like he's alone. He's a load and he can also run, too. I mean, he's that dual threat guy, and, you know, that's, those guys are something to worry about because you can cover everybody and do a great job, and all of a sudden he breaks containment and everybody's in coverage, and it turns into some big plays. And so he's a, he's a concern for us. He really is. We've got we to gotta uh, we know where he is all the time and account for him. And they have linebacker De Dequan Charles mm -hmm. on defense, and then their secondary guys led by Warren Dillon. They – do anything different than they have in the past on defense? They're, they're very similar to what they've been doing, um, you know, real similar. They have a few new wrinkles, but nothing, 
nothing out of character because a lot of times if you try to do too much or change too much, you're really playing away from the strengths of your team and your players. Um, they run the schemes they do for a reason. It fits their personnel. They're good at it. They execute it well. Um, so I don't, I don't see any big changes. Of course, they'll have some new wrinkles, as they should, as, as we do ourselves, as every team does. But, um, you know, we'll just have to see. We're just, it's going to boil down to turnovers and, and big plays is what it always turns down to. And a couple of games now at home, so it's nice you schedule yeah. seven out of 11 games yeah. at home. Yeah. So how, how long does it take you guys to recover from a big trip like going out to Arizona? It takes a couple of days. <clears throat> it takes a couple of days. Um, we got back Sunday. You know, we had to get up out of the, uh, out of the hotel at 5 a.m. and they'll get to the airport um, and, and fly back. And your clock's all messed up because you're on mountain yeah. time. Um, and last night, you know, I had a lot of things to do at home and didn't get to bed till late. But, it, you know, I, thought I was still on mountain time. But when I woke up this morning, I wasn't. <laughs> and so our kids were really tired from the trip. It's just because you get so wound up uh, for games, it's hard to go to sleep. Um, and they did finally go and then get up immediately that early to travel. Uh, yesterday was about rest and, and getting a stretching in and, and you know just getting some uh, the trainer to look at them and see who's who's what but it takes a couple of days that, that's a big trip um, and of course the eight-hour bus trips also take a lot out of you do you go lighter on practice like at the beginning of the week before a big trip like that yeah. after a big trip like yeah that? we don't we don't practice today today's our off day um, they'll get a lift in today uh, and just you know still a little recovery you, your Tuesday day is fairly heavy um, Wednesday lightens up a little bit, Thursday lightens up, and then Friday you, you just walk through. So it's, uh, it's really a progressive. You've got to, early in the week, it's going to be your heavier workloads. So you can taper down and, and get ready. But, yeah, it takes, you just got to feel the team and their pulse. And yesterday they needed a stretch more than they needed a lift. So that's what we did. And go back to Arizona Christian, Rams were second in the SAC polls. They were third mm -hmm. in, the, in the rankings. And, but they were top 20. They were 20th in the NAIA, while the Rams had like 13 votes, I think. Mm -hmm. Does that, do you hope, or does that mean anything by beating them as handedly as you did? Does that, do you hope that that'll flaunt you into the top 20 and knock them out? Well, of course. I mean, that's, that's, that's always our goal, you know, to, to, to climb. But, you know, hopefully the voters are really paying attention to what's going on and, and taking a real good look at it, and I think they will. Um, but if we didn't play that kind of game, and <clears throat> if we go and get beat, there's no chance. If we go out there and squeak it out or some fluke win, it may not change. But I think that we won in a way that it, you know, it's got to open some eyes, I would hope. So I hope the voters are going to look at it that way. Um, it's out of our control. All we can do is do the best we can and perform uh, and try to have as much success on the field as we can. And hopefully that will translate into the recognition and, and getting into that position. So. That's, it's, it's out of our hands, that part, the voting piece, but it's not out of our hands how we perform. So. Is the schedule different this year? Of course, you had the opening game, non-conference game against yeah. Arkansas State, Mexico, and then two straight SAC games. Is it odd or different to have like two consecutive SAC games now? No, no, um, because we, you know, last year we were on the road for those two games, so it's, it's just everything's flipped for this year. You know, last year's, uh, Last year's uh, road games now are home games, and man, last year was tough on the road. It was it was a lot of road games. It was a lot of long travel. Uh, this year, it's a lot better for us, but it's just the flip side of what it was last year. So, it's pretty standard. Um, you know, you'd always want it to be home away, home away, home away, but it just doesn't work out like that in the rotation. Um, and you know, for us, playing the two Arizona schools out of the first three Sooner Athletic Conferences is, is extremely challenging. And now you've got a team coming in who's wanting to really prove that, you know, their first two games were flukes, and that's not them. So it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. Now next year, will it go flip-flop back to more games on the road? We have a new rotation next year, so I don't know what it'll be because they, they redraw. This is the second year of the two-year rotation. Mm -hmm. So they'll redraw all that, in, um, and we'll know, I hope, February, January, so you know where your open dates are as far as to find non-conference games. Go get them, Coach. Saturday night, the Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle State University. Brendan Snow and myself will be doing play-by-play -play on Texas Wesleyan football on Ramsports.net.
backslash live. We'll be on the air about five minutes before. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff Saturday night at Farrington Field. Till then, for Coach Joe, go get them Rams, and we'll talk to you later on First and Ten.